Hi there everyone, welcome to episode two of Costa On Set. We have a great show planned for you tonight, featuring episode two of Daring Adventure and Clifford Cooking with Clifford. We're also gonna be interviewing Felix and Jordan from Boom Boom Brady. Like I said, it's gonna be a great show, so stick around. All right, welcome back to uh, Cliff's Kitchen. We're gonna be making some uh, lasagna today. It's uh, episode two. We uh, have our onion, we're gonna chop it up because we're gonna be cooking it in the saucepan with uh, some mild Italian sausage. All right, so we're gonna be making a sauce right now. It's gonna be a meat sauce. So we're gonna take half of this large onion. Um, we're gonna, you know, chop it up nice and fine. And we're gonna take uh, our garlic here. And then again, too, we're gonna break this up, you know, chop it up nice and fine, nice and minced. Set the stove to about medium high temperature. We're gonna toss in the, uh, onion and the uh, garlic in at the same time so that gets you know gets all nice and flavorful and we're gonna try to break up the meat like I said earlier real fine nice and small chunks because you know we want our lasagna to be layered pretty evenly we don't want you know some lopsided mumbo jumbo put in the onion but we're gonna be cooking about 12 lasagna noodles I like to put a little bit of extra uh, virgin olive oil in my water, you know, to add a little bit of flavor. So we'll put a little bit of that, keep the noodles from sticking also. And then to season our sauces, we're gonna be using a little bit of oregano, fresh oregano, just basic salt and some, you know, garlic powder. So as you can see, our uh, meat is already starting to brown. So I'm breaking it up a little. I might actually get a wooden spatula just so I could break it up a little finer. So now that the uh, meat is mostly cooked and we have our water boiling, we're gonna take this lid off and we're gonna take our lasagna noodles and we're gonna put them in for, a, I mean, they say to cook for about eight to nine minutes, but we're gonna undercook them slightly because they'll cook the rest of the way while baking in the, uh, in the oven. And we are going to take our can, our eight ounce can of tomato sauce. We're gonna pour it in over the meat mixture that we made and then salt and pepper to taste. So our noodles are just about done. We are going to be draining them soon. And we're gonna rinse it with cold water so the noodles don't stick together because we're gonna need them all individually as we layer the uh, lasagna. So here we have our noodles drained. Just gonna rinse those off. This gets all the extra starch off the noodles too and that's really what makes the uh, noodles stick together. All right, so now that we have all of our main components for our lasagna, we are gonna be taking our sauce first, and we're gonna just do like a nice little base layer. And then we are also gonna take our lasagna noodles, the ones that we had in the cold water, and we are going to lay them flat, and you know, along with the uh, pan. We're gonna take about three to four, and then next we're gonna take our ricotta cheese, and we're gonna spread a nice, oop, thin layer of ricotta cheese just along the noodles. Um, and then we're gonna get our mozzarella cheese. We got some store-bought mozzarella. It's, uh, we have two, we have regular mozzarella and mozzarella with Parmesan, a little over a pound. So as you see, I'm taking big handfuls. This is the uh, mozzarella Parmesan mixture. I'm gonna do a combination of both. So that's our first base layer right here and this casserole is going to bake at 350 for about half an hour i would cover it with you know tin foil not all the way wrapped tight but you know like a nice loose so there could be some airflow still and that should leave the cheese nice and gooey and melty by the time uh by the time it's done baking a little bit of that salt bay action you, you did you see we have our last three noodles left and this layer doesn't have to be quite as thick. We're gonna do our final sauce layer. We're gonna get some more of our um, mozzarella and parm mixture now. We're gonna just cover the whole layer so you almost can't see the sauce, you know? It doesn't have to be too thick, but just, you know, pretty nice, even blanket. We're gonna cover it with some uh, tin foil. A nice little something or other like that. And the final step is just to throw it in the oven at a 350 or 375 degrees for 30 minutes. You know, you can check on it at about the 25 minute mark. Maybe pull the foil off and give it the next five to 10 minutes and 
You will have yourself a lasagna. We got about a minute left on our timer here, and about five minutes earlier, I pulled the uh, foil that we had on top of our uh, lasagna. That allowed the uh, cheese to melt at a faster rate, and it's looking pretty darn done to me right now. So we're gonna take this baby out, set this down underneath the pan, and uh, voila. So this is our uh, lasagna, uh, bon appetit. All right, and uh, that concludes the uh, second edition or episode of Cooking with Clifford. Uh, stay tuned for the episode three. It should be a uh, hot and spicy time in the kitchen. All right. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good, man. Cool, so before we get into you guys' music, I just want to talk a little bit about your backgrounds. Where'd you guys come from? Where'd you grow up? And how'd you end up in a band? Uh, me and Jordan met uh, working at Coachella, actually, uh, selling churros and pretzels and water bottles. So we're messing around, and he was playing guitar and started singing. Yeah. And he said, do you want to start a band? And I was just like, yeah. And then I looked up where he lived, and he was 0.1 miles away from my house. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I just, I don't even think I drove that day. I think I just wa ended up walking to his house. Yeah. So oh, it made, made writing songs yeah, really that's easy. that's easy, man. And yeah. then before we get into talking about the actual music, I got to know, where's the name come from? Boom Boom Brady. Where'd you get Jordan, that? Uh, I'll, let do, know. I'll do this. Uh, so I'm uh, actually originally from New Hampshire, and uh, New Hampshire, you know, is basically just one giant forest, and there's not a lot to do there. So when I was a freshman in high school, the seniors got pretty bored, and they decided to build some uh, pipe bombs. You know, that's what you do with your time. So uh, then they decided to blow up some porta bodies and a uh, mailbox. Almost got charged with terrorism because that's what happens when you build bombs and blow things up. No, and uh, one of the kids' names was uh, Brady. So the local newspaper actually uh, coined the whole group of friends, uh, or terrorists, however you want to call them, uh, Boom Boom Brady and the Gunpowder Gang. And that's how it came out. Wow, that's a good story. Yeah, it's better than just uh, finding a bunch of words and putting them together. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. the story. Yeah, you got yeah, yeah. to have a little <laughs> story behind the name, or then it's just. Random words. Yeah, I definitely. Once, it, I heard, once I heard the story, I loved the name. I was like, oh. oh yeah, it's, it's a good story. It's a good backstory when people ask. And yeah. I want to know, who are all the members in the band? How many do you have? And what are the instruments that are included in this band? Oh, uh, I'm just vocals. Jordan is lead guitar. Then we have another rhythm guitar player, Eric Farnsworth. We have a bass player, Brian Yamas. And our drummer is Cameron Andres. Mm -hmm. and, okay, cool. And then yeah. we have Dukes. Uh, he comes in sometimes. Yeah, Daniel Dukes. Uh, keyboard. Okay, I got you. And I want to now move to the current event, what you guys are com having coming up. Uh, you guys are very excited for it. I can just yes. tell, yeah. And let's talk about it. Grizzly Fest 2018. Now, can you explain what Grizzly Fest is before we talk about your role in it? So Grizzly Fest is a music festival that gets put on every year. I, I think this is the fifth year they did, did they? Mm -hmm. maybe? Biggest in Central Valley. It's the biggest yeah. music festival in the Central Valley. And it used to be at uh, Chichancy Park, but now they moved it to Wilbur Park, and now it's two days. Mm -hmm. So it's the biggest one that they've done ever. Okay. And then what, what's the story behind how you guys actually came to perform or you're going to be performing at this event? Because I, I read online there's, there's going to be 15,000 people there. Which that's a huge audience. That is crazy. Yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah. even know. Like, I don't, I'm not yeah. thinking about it a lot. <laughs> uh, I, uh, well, there was this contest, like a fan contest, to mm -hmm. see who, what local acts or what smaller acts they wanted to put on the bill. Mm -hmm. And we did not win. <laughs> and so the we get the phone call. I think the phone like right after the contest, uh -huh. like results came out. I got the call from the promoter, and uh, he asked me, "Hey, do you guys want to play on Grizzly Fest?" And I said, "This year?" And he uh -huh. said, "Yeah, like in May." And I was like, "Yeah, like we for sure. Yeah, of course." We'll yeah. Play. And so no one was home, and I was like looking around. I wanted to you know, hug somebody or something, and there was nobody around. So I called this guy a whole bunch of times. He didn't pick up. So I told him that day at practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was very excited. I was disbelief, actually, that we were actually going to So this all in the span of how many days they said you didn't win the contest to, hey, you're going to be performing? I don't think we, had a, we knew that we didn't have a shot with the contest. I don't know. Like, we just didn't try. Uh -huh. I, so. You know what I mean? Like, what, uh, <laughs> other artists were, like, really pushing uh, to win that. And I don't know why we didn't. Uh -huh. And then it ended up being... So, so what, what was the deal? Like, I feel like there's more to the story than that. They, they heard it, and they're like, man, these guys are really good. Like, oh, I don't I care about the, the contest. I, uh, or? The promoter is a good friend of mine, uh -huh. and he happens to really, really like our music and think, our, think that we put on really good live shows. Yeah. So he was like, I want you to play this. Like, not. And I was like, oh, did we win the contest? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> but I want you guys to play on it. So we were... I'm not going to say no to the biggest music festival in Central California. That makes sense. California, you know, yeah, because so. at, at this point in time, what is the biggest venue you guys have performed in? It's about Barrel House in uh, Visalia, uh -huh. and that was uh, one of the first times we actually played on like 
a very legitimate stage of monitors and lights. We okay. had a sound guy. So you know, people were there. A sound guy, kind of. But now I, I mean. We played on great days. That's probably the biggest audience, but there's just nobody there. Yeah. yeah. It's like such a weird experience to play live music for people that are oh, already no there. there. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd be in a room alone or something. Like he's like, <laughs> I was like, by the way, 90,000 people are watching. And then they just like, oh, well, that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people uh -huh. watching you, even though there is. Yeah. The okay. live, there's no live atmosphere, I guess you could say. Uh huh. I got you. So this will be the biggest show we ever play yeah like volume like you know what i mean and are, are you guys nervous for that Fifteen thousand people is a well, see, i've been people, not trying to know? think about it that much yeah. you know it's we make music because it's fun for us to play music live mm. so, so whether you know, 10 so, people or ten thousand people it doesn't so going out there to me it's always you still do the same thing it doesn't matter how many people are there we're there there to make the best live music we can okay. and that's all i try to think about when i go out there i don't think about how everyone thinks about the music, or how is everyone's judging how we look up there. Mm. I'm just going up there and having the best time I can. Mm. I'm nervous. <laughs> just be honest. I'm nervous about at it. every yeah, show. Yeah, it's cool. But I like the nerves. It makes uh -huh. me want to do a good job. Yeah. So I don't mind being nervous. Definitely. And then, well, how, how's the rehearsal schedule right now? You guys doing every day or every day that we can? Once a day? <laughs> every day that we can. Yeah. I mean, I you know practice guitar every single day yeah. for a couple hours, and then oh. we're practicing. Singing uh, in the shower a lot. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and we practice as much as we can. We're practicing today, tomorrow, mm. you know, and then Thursday we're probably just gonna try to relax a little bit. Hang out, chill out. And then yeah, Friday, I three forty. We're playing again. So it's at three forty is the time you guys yeah, are playing at. Cool. How long is your set? Thirty minutes long. So are you guys performing like uh, some new stuff or is it all the classics that everybody knows? Uh, we're playing something from everything. So we're playing a song off the first EP we ever did. Uh -huh. We're doing songs off our new album. Building Up Credit. Building Up Credit. Mm -hmm. It just got released on the 20th. And then we're playing songs that no one's ever, unless you've seen this live, you've yeah. never heard these songs before. Okay. And let's pretend some people have not heard these songs before. I, I want you to use some key words to describe your music. Like, let's shift towards that. You're all right. I, would, uh, I like to call it blues alternative rock. Mm -hmm. Right, so because when people think of if it's just blues music, they think of like old timers just like playing a harmonica. Yeah, yeah. that's not where we are. We're also not just alternative music, mm -hmm. and we are rock, obviously. So I like to say blues alternative rock because we're more of a modern style of blues mm -hmm. rock. Mm -hmm. A lot more like a uh, like the Black Keys, really like the Black Keys, Kings of Leon, Alabama, Rose, Alabama Shakes. You know, so we've kind of tried to combine all that with some more old school sound as well. And uh, yeah, that's how you got Boom Boom Brady. Okay, and is that a style that you guys had developed over time, or was that like from the start? This is the style I want. We want to go I for. I think as we've a gotten band. more contemporary. I think we've gotten more modern. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, our first albums was a little bit of a bluesier sound. Yeah, so we've definitely are getting uh, our first album. You know, we uh, try to record as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. and uh, so you can hear it. It's uh, production-wise, it's very simple, mm -hmm. and. The more music we make, I feel like every song we make is more mature. So yeah, the more idea. we play, the more songs you write, the more mature our song sounds. Mm -hmm. okay. And as you can hear from our first album to our second album, and now especially uh, our new music is definitely getting much more professional sounding. Mm -hmm. And you know that's what we're going for. And Girl, all, all growth is good, you know what I mean? Definitely, so, yeah. And we don't want to always make the same sound. Yeah, you know, that's boring. You gotta yeah, change a little bit. Change it up. We're still sticking to our roots, but at the same time, we're trying to spread this way, spread that way, and try to make uh, you know every song a little different so it doesn't sound like just white noise throughout the whole album. Mm -hmm. Especially like as as from a writing standpoint too, you don't want to write the songs that sound the same all the time. You know what I mean? That's Definitely, just not yeah. it's not fun for us either. Mm -hmm. You know, and people aren't gonna want to listen to. The, the album sounds exactly the same as the first the or the second one. or the third, third so, uh -huh. you know, the, the, from a writing standpoint, it's way more fun to make more complex, modern, newer stuff, so. Definitely, I agree. And um, one of the things I want to talk about, too, is the literal sound difference between the first album and the second. I'm not talking about a change in tone. I'm talking about the literal sound sounding a lot better on the second album. Can you explain, like, what the difference process you guys went through? Did you guys yeah, so, uh, a different studio? Yeah. What was the deal? So, one, we went to a different studio, which uh -huh. definitely helped. And uh, we were able, in the second studio, actually do live recordings in a big room. Mm -hmm. it's called, they call them big room recordings. Yeah, so in the first one, we had to play every instrument by itself, oh, and we wow. just would hear tracks on our, like, headphones. It was... Is that standard? It makes okay. it very... No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, not it's, it's, it's the cheap way to do it. <laughs> okay. So when you're just starting out and you don't know what you're doing, yeah, okay. that's the way you're going to do it. Yeah, okay. And especially also, like I said, in the first album, uh, we try to make music fast. So we, Because when we first started, it was just me and Felix. We didn't even have other musicians yet. Yeah, oh, so really? we okay. had to... Wow. You know, we were kind of confined to making a certain type of sound because I didn't have the uh, 
flexibility to, you know, make like put a solo here or, you know, have kind of a drum breakdown somewhere else. Because uh -huh. it was just like, all right, guitar, vocals. But now we added a lot more musicians. Uh, like we had another guitar player, uh, keyboard player, you know, that helped a lot. It really opened up to a lot more creativity because we weren't confined just to two people. Mm -hmm. And that definitely, you can hear that in the second album, that it is more complex in a way. I don't like to make complex music. It's still simple. It's still, you can just tap your foot to it. Yeah. But there is more going on, which, you know, makes a fuller sound and a more professional, mature sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one of my questions, too, is like the process that you guys go through to make your music. So it's definitely evolved because you guys are adding more parts to it. How, how, how are you starting out, though, with each song? Who's, who's writing the lyrics? Who's writing the beat? Like, whose job is what? So usually the way it starts is uh, I make something up on the guitar. Oh. And then uh, I'll play it a lot until I... And I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. I'll be playing it in practice. I'm like, what is that? Keep I like that. it. <laughs> so then uh, I'll just jam on it for a while, and then Felix will start writing lyrics <coughs> over. And then we start jamming with the band, and then I'm like, hey, try this, try that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, some songs will happen like that. Right. Other songs take a little more effort. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it starts basically a guitar riff, then vocals, and then we add everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, in some songs, yeah, piano sounds great, but some songs they don't. So it really depends, you know? Yeah. It depends on how it starts. Okay. And who's getting the final, like, uh, is it everybody's getting a final say? Like, you always come to an agreement, or who actually has the final say in how it's going to sound and where the lyrics are? I mean, it's pretty, pretty democratic. Okay. I mean, if the song, you know, if we're pretty, we agree on, like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't agree at first, then you try it a different way, you're like, oh, that is better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's pretty democratic. This guy's, like, the maestro, like. Yeah, so, I mean, if every band, you need someone that kind of directs mm -hmm. practice, especially. Yeah. Because if, if no one does that, it's just, uh. It's chaos, you know? Everyone just, every time someone stops, someone starts playing a random thing, the drummer starts doing random things. And you know, you need someone that's, you know, a little bit stern and really Structured. keeps people in line and works on structure. Uh -huh. And I've taken that job, which is, you know, not always the most fun thing, because, you know, you try to have a fun time in practice, but, you know, you do have yeah. to have structure. And you it's need practice to have... for a reason. Uh -huh. You're practicing. Makes sense. Yeah. So during practice, case. you know, that's my job, to keep everyone in line. But you know, we all contribute, so it's not like a dictatorship by any means. Okay, that's good to hear that you guys are all uh, taking parts and working it all together. And my final question for this segment, uh, what did you guys do the day the album came out, your second album? Were you all together? Or were you just we actually uh, played a show in uh, Paso Robles. Yeah, we uh, had an Airbnb, we were all hanging out in Paso together, so it was oh. actually pretty cool. Was there a nice celebration after uh, it came you out? You know what, we didn't, uh, We were, I think it was at night. And you forget that when it gets released, it gets released at midnight. <laughs> in a, on the East California. Coast. Okay. Yeah. So it got released midnight Eastern on the East Coast. Oh, okay. So people are sending me texts, hey, it sounds good, good job, blah, blah, blah. And you got the notification um, or the pre-order, like someone got the pre-order notification that oh. it was ready to, uh, to listen to. And we were like, oh, it's out. Yeah. So it was like the, it was, we didn't get to have a lot of anticipation for that day mm -hmm. because it kind of just happened you know what I mean I got you. it was yeah. like oh it's out it's <laughs> yeah, like oh okay well I guess we don't have to worry about anything anymore it's, our, it's on the internet forever now mm -hmm. so you can't do anything about it so I got you guys well cool yeah I hope you guys can stick around I have a lot more questions I want to awesome. ask you guys we're gonna be checking in with Ryan who has this new episode of Darren Adventure coming out I'm very excited to see it and I'm sure you guys will be too stick around Everybody, we're here with Daring Adventure Episode Two. We're at the San Jose Convention Center, and uh, you can see a lot's going on. So let's go look around. And we're here with Amy, a cosplayer in action. Let's see what she has to say about this convention. Um, I'm Amy. My uh, cosplay name is Cosplay Me. Uh, I've been going to Fanime for two years now. I'm cosplaying as Mordred from the Fate series. Awesome. Where are you from? I'm from Medford, Oregon. So, a little awesome. bit of a drive, about yeah. six hours. Six hours for this? Yeah. That's crazy. Totally worth it, though. Do you do a lot of, do you do a lot of festivals or conventions? I do a lot. I do like four or five a year, wow. um, and then maybe some small ones. Okay. Uh, I've been cosplaying since 2012. Awesome. So. Anything you want to plug? Your Instagram, maybe? Uh, my Instagram is cosplayme, C-O-S-P-L-A-I-M-E-E. -E. 
Awesome. Yeah, go follow Amy, and uh, we'll check in with you in a bit. So Adam and I have been exploring and we found out there's a lot more to do here than just cosplay. Take a look. Checking out a lot of cool things. They have amazing games here, and a lot of people are really good at them. Check this out. After we checked out the gaming room, we decided to go and check out what else we can find. We ended up finding a giant room full of all kinds of merchandise and memorabilia. Shout out to the Chalk Twins, they are doing this giant chalk drawing right in the middle of the convention. It's pretty amazing. Check out their stuff on Instagram. Also, check Costal Vids on Instagram. And there you have it. We finished up our first cosplay event. It was amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed all of the great shots. And we have even more videos coming out in the next week. So stay tuned. See you then. All right, welcome back from Daring Adventure. Like I said, I have a lot more questions I want to ask these two, so let's get right to it. And I actually have a copy of your album here. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I had a copy here. And I want to talk about the album art. What's the deal with it? It looks really unique, really cool. I like the picture. Yeah, so... Uh... Uh, my mom's actually an artist, and she's, she's a great artist, and I uh, actually asked her to paint some kind of uh, picture for our band, and oh, yeah. I said it'd be, it'd be cool if it was something, you know, Fresno, if we could somehow get the skyline in there, because we're really proud to be from Fresno. Mm -hmm. So uh, she came back with that, and it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, she basically just took kind of a picture, added a bunch of paint over mm -hmm. it, added some filters, and I mean, I, I think it looks great, you know? Mm -hmm. I was super against it. Oh, really? It's like my what? mom's gonna paint our album cover, and I was like, oh, "Why would your mom paint our album cover?" <laughs> yeah. And then I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, okay." An MSP. I love that thing. Yeah, 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 I love it. No, yeah, it came out <clears> really <throat> good, and um, I love a lot of the songs on there. I've had a chance to listen to it. There's a really great album. I'm really impressed with the sound Thanks, and how you guys have Thank improved uh, from the sounding of the first album. But there's a few songs I want to talk about specifically. And I just want you to go into a little bit about what they're about. You, you can say as much or as little as you want, but mm -hmm. we'll just talk a little bit about them because uh, some of the songs have a lot of emotion to them. I feel like the first being the song "Please." Mm -hmm. now, can you talk a little? A little bit about that song. I'd love to hear some more about it. I mean, that one's a lot less cryptic than people think it mm. is. You know, it's just like, you know, please wait for <laughs> me. Don't yeah, run away. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, don't leave. You know what I mean? Please don't leave. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So it's like, a, you know, it's your standard. It's not that intricate. Like, lyric-wise. Okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's a simpler one of them. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, musically, you know, it's uh, one of our more simple, structured ones. You know, it just goes... Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, but you know sometimes that's great because mm -hmm. it if it works. You know, there's no surprises. It just sounds very casual, and it's it's one of our more uh, it's an easier listening chill song. Yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> 
And uh, I mean, I love, you know, the guitar riff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made it up, so of course I'm gonna like it <laughs> yeah, a little like bit. It. And, and uh, yeah, no, it's a great song. And uh, it's, it's definitely, it's one of our most uh, played ones right you know, now on iTunes. If you asked us before, like the album came out, that, that Please would be one of the most popular ones, I don't think I, I, oh, I didn't. Oh, really? Okay. You don't, some, some songs you think they're gonna be yeah. more popular than others, but you, at the end of the day, you have no control over what people are gonna like about sure. it. So Please is like, I wasn't really expecting that particular song. I love the song, or else it wouldn't have made it on the album. For sure, yeah. But I didn't think that people would gravitate towards it so much, I guess. So, so far, what's the most popular song, would you say, in the general public's view? Uh, the Wavy song? Oh, it, okay, that's it's nice. usually it's, Wavy. Yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's actually really exciting for us because I actually check uh, iTunes music every day just to see what our top song <laughs> exactly, is, and it's yeah. it's been changing, mm -hmm. you know, which means people are actually listening to it, which is was a surprise to me. You know, I yeah. thought you know our friends would listen to it once and that'd be the end of it, but yeah. looking at it now, it's you know the top song keeps changing, so it means people are you know listening to it daily, mm -hmm. which is great. But like, what's really crazy is when people from like a different country, because when you get oh, like yeah. uh, you get the the, uh, the Apple Music reports and it'll be like Spotify Germany. You know what I mean? Spotify, Finland, and you're like, how do they even figure that? How did it like, how find you? Yeah. Like, find us. Wow. Okay. So, like, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool that people are finding you. The actually... internet, man, it's crazy. <laughs> such, a, such a valuable tool. Yeah, I mean, before everybody. those CDs that we printed, we just got them a couple weeks ago, there was actually not one physical copy of our music. Yeah. It was just Didn't all exist. distributed through the internet. Oh, really? Which is, okay. You know, that's just how modern music is now. Yeah. Just, yeah. But it's crazy to think about. Like, you could not physically have a copy of our music until about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even think about that either. <laughs> cool. And the next song I want to talk about, you actually mentioned it, is the Wavy song. What's, what's the meaning behind that one? Because that one does seem like it has one, too. Uh, yeah. uh, that's a high school sweetheart song. Oh, okay. So that's probably one of the ones that I thought about, like, lyrically the most. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember back in grade school. What do you do when you're in elementary school and you like a girl? Mm -hmm. You poke her, you pull her hair, you run away. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I remember back in high school, now all the boys, they buy you roses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like... You grew up with somebody, you know what I mean? You remember being little kids together and seeing somebody become a super beautiful, successful person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those songs, you know, don't you love me, baby, like when we were kids, you know yeah. what I mean? So I like that song a lot. I'm glad that song is my favorite one that we recorded too because Kyle, our photographer, uh -huh. our bassist, our drummer. Even I, Jordan, even me. They, were, they all <laughs> did the ooze. And I didn't, and it was just, I loved it. Mm. I was just there, they put them all in the, in the big recording studio, gave them all headphones, put them around one microphone, and everyone just went, ooh, and I was just like, yes. No, was, like, it's my, my, that that's really my fun. favorite moment from the recording process. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then the final song I want to talk about, and like I said, where we can go into it as much or as little as you want, is the song called Brother, which I'm, I'm sure has a ton of meaning behind it. Uh, it's probably, I'm guessing, one of your most popular songs on the first album. It's, yeah, it's I think really it's the most great, popular. It's a really good yeah, so, song, for sure. I mean, I, I, that was uh, the guitar riff that I've been playing for years, mm -hmm. you know, and that was the first song we actually wrote mm -hmm. as me and Felix. That is the first song we wrote. And, you know, so that one's, once That's I heard that, song, once yeah. we actually wrote that, I was like, all right, this music thing is actually going to work out. Yeah. Because the song is catchy, it's already stuck in my yeah. head. And, yeah, no, I, I really like that. It's definitely my favorite song off the first album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, ah, uh, you know... You, you write a song about like a lot of people, like you get a lot of, like inspiration from a lot of different stories in your life, mm. and it kind of gets directed at one person. Yeah. So you kind of like, I didn't mean that about you. Mm -hmm. But but once the song's released, like I said, you have no control over how people perceive it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Somebody asked me, uh, something like she burns hot is about cigarettes. Oh really? You know what okay. It's about smoking cigarettes. And but everyone's like, oh, that's a girl. That's the girl he's got. The, <laughs> that's a girl he has the hots for, yeah. and it's like it's not. It's about smoking cigarettes. cigarettes. It's about how I don't want to smoke cigarettes. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like once it's out there, like it doesn't belong to you anymore. Uh -huh. Like that becomes someone can take whatever they want from the wavy song or Sheeper and Todd. No, it's great about music. I know that's it's it's fun seeing that as the person who made it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? I never expected that to. Go are are there any so, songs also like like the cigarette um, the song being about cigarettes? Are there any songs that people just got totally wrong? Like in your opinion, I mean that you thought, oh, it's totally about this, and everybody thought it was about something else. Let me see which ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. We got a bunch here. <laughs> well, I know Mother Mary. People thought that was a very religious. Yeah, song. Yeah, that was oh, an okay. accident. <laughs> yeah, it's not religious. You know what I mean? It's not religious at all. Uh -huh. But it's like, brothers, pray, my like pray. Oh, yeah. I can't save your soul. That sounds really religious too. Yeah. On accident. So you, you know, don't try to have that religious undertone. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. 
But, it, you know, I was raised Catholic, super Catholic kid, mm. so I'm, I might subconsciously I got you, throw some stuff in there, but that's just because that's part of my vernacular, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay. But, um, I don't know. She Burns Hot Again? It's like, not about... Well, I don't write the lyrics, so this is, yeah, this yeah. is a question for you. <laughs> I feel like people haven't told me okay. like that they thought the song was about this or that they thought the song was about that, but I know for sure that there's a lot of songs on both albums that people think it's about a girl or it's about partying or something, but <laughs> right. in reality it's not, you know okay. what I mean? Okay, I got you. So they just interpret it a special way, or yeah. they, they see it a different and way. And I try not to focus on that because that's like one of those things you can't control at all. Oh, for sure. Once so, it gets out there, it's just how Yeah, once it's out there, it's just it. what yeah. it is. For sure. Cool. And one of the final things I want to talk about, it's going to be a little bit of a longer segment, um, is about influencing in Fresno. It's one of the themes of the show. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about music and how music is influencing Fresno. And before we get into that, let's just talk about who's influencing you guys. And I want to start with like mainstream people or mainstream things that are influencing you guys and your music. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, we a huge fan of Black Keys, Kings of Leon, uh, The Strokes. Uh, is I love a great lift too. Yeah, I like a lot of own. old school bands, you know, like Led Zeppelin, of course, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Eric Clapton, uh, Jimi Hendrix. John Mayer. John Mayer. Uh, I'm actually a huge Jack Johnson fan. That's actually what got me to start playing guitar. Mm. So I think... What uh, a left turn. <laughs> yeah, you know, but if you if you look, if did, you look at it, I use a lot of kind of Jack Johnson techniques. Mm -hmm. I just made them a little more bluesier and rock and roll. So I'm basically playing a Jack Johnson kind of style sometimes with a lot mm -hmm. of distortion. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, we, that's definitely our influences there. Our local bands, you know, Strange Vine is really great. Strange, it's, it means so much to me to, uh, to be on the same festival as them Aww. because I would run into those guys drunk all the time and <laughs> just like talk, talk about how I wanted to be in a band. You know, I wanted to be a musician as well. I wanted to be a singer. Yeah. You know, and they're always super polite and nice to me. And now, like, we're playing the same. They don't, they probably don't even know how much they've influenced guys like us. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we're playing the same festival. And that's like, you know what I mean? Like poetic moment. Yeah, you know I, I mean? got you. They don't think about it until it Exactly, happens. right? Yeah, and I hope there. that we can be like that to yeah. somebody. Like, oh, tell me the, the kids. When we have rehearsal, these neighborhood kids will yeah, ride their bikes okay. right outside of the house and just sit there and listen. Uh -huh. And we caught them once. <laughs> right? My roommate... Snapchatted us with the kid just hanging out in our yeah. driveway listening oh, to so, us. That's so cool. <laughs> so that, yeah, so that was really cool like, to see. That felt, right when you're doing that? Like, oh, man. No, we were, we were upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't even see it. It was just, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was Snapchat. Snapchat. So we were all like, I was like, what are the kids, what are they doing? And all they're like, right. oh, they're just listening to us. Oh, that's so cool. I was like, what? Yeah. Do you give that kid a signed copy of the album or something? Did you, you give him? him a copy? <laughs> I will now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's your number one fan. You kind of have to. Like I said, Damn. only two weeks old. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. So how does that make you feel? Because that's actually something I didn't know about. Like, how does that make you feel that kids or people are just listening to you guys? Like, for example, they're listening to you and you don't even know about it. And it's just like, how does that feel? That's why my favorite compliment to receive about seeing us live or hearing our music, they, they're like, oh, it doesn't suck at all. Yeah, it's like, oh, you guys you know, are actually like, good. Oh, you guys are good at Because, I mean, I don't know. If, if people just have that opinion of their friends or whatever, mm. where they're trying to be an, a For musician sure. or a singer, and they're not very good, mm. and then but you still show support. So to get found out that people like you a lot, and you're not just some garage band, <laughs> and it's like that's a, that's a, that's my favorite compliment. We play above our garage. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you technically, know. <laughs> you're not a garage band. I got you. Cool. And how how have you guys seen the music scene evolve in Fresno since you guys have started playing? You know, it's good. I think a lot of uh, venues are starting to open up more to uh, so original music. I think a couple years ago, when anywhere you go, there would just be cover bands, which is, you know, always fun to listen to, but it's not as exciting as hearing a, you know, a band mm -hmm. that's... Play their play stuff live. Yeah, and it's, you're probably one of the first people to ever hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think because of that, they, uh, these venues are starting to see that those kind of bands are starting to bring in a lot more people. And I think that Grizzly Fest and, like, fashion... Uh, Strange Vine have a lot to do with that too, because it's like now that there's a bigger venue for people to play at, mm -hmm. where where big names are going to come too. So now someone who likes Foster the People, they're going to see us play way before Foster the People. Yeah. Then they might like us. <coughs> it just gives you a, a people opportunity to appreciate live music, and that's what we care about a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it kind of goes along the same thing. How, how do you guys plan to take advantage of the current music scene in Fresno? Just try to play as much live as possible. You know, I always like to think of us more of a, as a live band than a studio band. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that really always annoys me is when I hear a, a band on their studio on the recording and it sounds great. And then you see them live and 
it's kind of a disappointment. Yeah. You know, okay. like I'd much rather. They couldn't complete the songs. Yeah, so I'd much it. rather see a band, uh, hear them on the recording, and then see them live, and they're better. You know, mm -hmm. that to me is mm -hmm. actual talent. You know, if you have a great producer, great recording engineer, they can make anyone sound pretty good. Another but, but having the internet. actual talent and skill and, you know, maybe even courage to go out there and play mm -hmm. is something I appreciate a lot more than just having the studio sound really good. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really thrive for, and I think that's why uh, we're kind of successful uh, playing live shows in Fresno, because we are a fun, high energetic live band. Mm -hmm. oh. And that we, get we get told to be quiet or... or <laughs> oh, really? Okay. And we're like... Every oh. time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I don't think people are, expect us to be like a loud live mm. rock band. You know, a lot of time when you hear bands are kind of quiet in the background playing background music. Yeah. And I think sometimes venues expect us to be background music and... They realize that we're not very, we're, very quickly. Yeah, we're not background music. We're definitely like a live uh, performance. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like just something you throw in the corner... Mm -hmm. We want to be a show where people come to this venue to see us, hmm. not just to, you know, drink right there. I forgot the order of the... Oh, I got you. Yeah, checking everything out. But yeah, um, real quick, too, I want to talk about um, what are your long-term goals for the band? What are your long-term goals to influence the music scene in Fresno? You know, our goal, uh, my goal was always first to uh, play five shows so I could beat my dad. My dad was in a band in the 70s and so played five shows. You would say that all the time. And I was like, all right, got that. Now my n next goal then was to play music festival. Mm -hmm. oh. And then we're doing that. So we're doing that on Friday. So um, you gotta give yourself like goals that you can achieve. Because I'll be like, I can't wait till we play Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> and Jordan's like, let's play for more than two hundred people before we start talking yeah. about playing yeah, and Jimmy okay. Fallon. You know. So I think our next goal, that's you know realistic, is to uh, really establish maybe just like a West Coast tour. Mm -hmm. But you know, we need. We're still new to this. We've only been really a gigging band for about a year, year and a half, and that's something that takes a lot of planning. And that's something we really need to start doing. Yeah. And that's really our so next The learning one. and the, like, the journey, I guess, is, like, the, it's, like, a really fun part of doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, thinking about how we got better at making music and singing and writing lyrics as we keep going. So, like, that's, like, my goal was always, you know, put a ha have an album. Mm -hmm. Just have an album. And then I was like, okay, now I want two. You know, and now we have two. Yeah. And now just it's like, growing. and then because you, you think that you're going to run out of things to say, and then you don't, and you just keep going, yeah. and, it, and it becomes more fun. Yeah. Because you, ha you have more songs in your repertoire, you get used to it, it becomes more fun. Mm. Like, nothing's fun when you do it the first time because you're not going to be very good at it. I got you. You know what I mean? So now it's like, you become more comfortable, more fun. You'll be like, more, you have more, like, be sillier, mm -hmm. you know, on stage. That's definitely more fun now playing yeah, live, it's just way more because fun. no nerves. You know? We know what we're doing. You know, the mm -hmm. first time we played, we played live. We were like stressing out. We practiced every day for like a week, mm -hmm. and we were really nervous when we played. But now, since we do have, you know, somewhat of experience playing live, when we go out there, it's just more about having fun. Mm -hmm. Obviously, still sounding good, but yeah, it lets us have more fun. I got you. Cool. And then the final question for you guys, and you can both answer separately. Who would you love to open for? Black Keys. Yeah, Black Keys. Uh, oh, I guess I'll say Strokes then. <laughs> the Black yeah, I really I love, want to see the Strokes. That's I one love of the, the few Black bands Keys I've so seen. much. Like, if we could, like, if they asked us, if, if Dan Arbatch calls us tomorrow, and he's like, "You guys want to open up for me in Oakland?" I'm like, yes, yeah, we made it. I look does they, uh, maybe, yeah, just the Black Keys. I think. I think that's the topic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you guys. Cool, and uh, we're running out of time here, so uh, we always have a thing at the end here where we let people promote whatever they have coming up. I think I can guess what you guys want to promote, but go ahead, whatever you want to say. Oh, yeah, we have Grizzly Fest, definitely, but the week after that, we're actually going to be playing at Fulton 55, mm. and uh, we're giving away free tickets, or if you want to contribute, whatever you'd like, but uh, just you know, contact us through our Instagram or Facebook, get our tickets, and then we're playing with four other bands, so it's going to be a really mm -hmm. fun live music event in Fresno. Oh, and Whiskey bands. Fest. And Whiskey Fest yes. is the week after that. That's it's going to be, gonna be at uh, The Standard. And then uh, you have to purchase tickets for that through uh, The Standard, but mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of free uh, whiskey tasting. Yeah. We, there's a big stage. It's going to be Food, a really fun time. tables. Like, yeah. It's outdoors. It's a like, nice outdoor. It's, it's going to be really fun. So Fulton 55 is May 25th, and then Whiskey Fest is June 2nd. And then uh, we're playing a little show on the 18th of May. Um, it's called Grizzly Fest. I don't know if anyone's that one, yeah, that one well. heard of it, but that yeah, one is well. Really excited about yeah, that's going to be a great show. Yeah, Felix yeah. and uh, Thanks, Jordan, man. I really Thanks appreciate so having you guys man. on. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan, man.
cool. So uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to episode two of Cost On Set. I had a great time interviewing these two. Hope you guys had a great time and learned some stuff. And we look forward to seeing everybody for episode three of Costo On Set. You have a nice day. Everybody knows it, baby